right, Algebra 1, Lesson 52. This is on more on addition of rational expressions with unequal denominators and then overall average. So kind of two different lessons in one. Now, before we start on this, um, I want you to see, and I wrote this on a piece of paper so that I could easily um, show you something. Okay, so what we're used to when working with um, adding and subtracting fractions Okay, let's go to very, very, very basic. Um, let's do, okay, let's do very, very basic. Okay, what would I do here to try to come up with a common denominator? Because when you're adding fractions, you have to have a common denominator. We would take 3 times 2 and get 6 as our answer, right? Okay, as our common denominator. This one we would take 3 times 2 and get 6. Okay, now stay with me. Okay, so just like I times it by two to get six and times this one by three to get six. Okay, now you're used to doing this, so let's go ahead and finish it out. Three times two is six. What you do to the bottom one, you have to do to the top one times two, so one times two is two. Then we well, already figured out that three is the one we need, two times three would equal six, so then what we do to the bottom, we have to do the top. 1 times 3 is 3. So to answer this problem, we would go 3 plus 2, which will be 5, and then 6 is our denominator that we leave. That's how we would answer that problem, okay? Knowing this, I'm going to leave it up here just in a smaller version, so stay with me. Um, we're going to go, I should have done this smaller in the first place. This is our standard for what we're going by to answer this next portion. Okay, so stay with me. Here's the equation they give us this time. Okay, so I'm going to write it down here for just a minute so you can see it, and then I'm going to do the work over here. AX plus B over X plus Y. Now, again, same kind of problem, one-half AX plus one-third, b over x plus y. You still have to do the same thing that you would normally do. We would go two times three to get six as our common denominator. Well, we're gonna go x times x plus y to get our common denominator. Just like here, we went two times three to get six as our common denominator. We're gonna go x times x plus y to get our common denominator. So, I'm gonna write this down um, horizontal, or I'm sorry, vertically, instead of sideways. So stay with me, okay? So that you can see what we're doing. We did two times three to get six. We're gonna go x times x plus y. x times x plus y. That's our denominator, just like two times three gave us the answer of six. x times x plus y, okay? Now you don't actually have to solve these out and do x times x plus x times y and figure it out. They just want you to leave it in that very basic right there. Now you ask yourself, what is multiplied here to get to here? Well, we already have our x plus y, we already have our x plus y, so then we just needed to multiply it by x to get that there, right? Because x plus y, we already have our x plus y, so then it's multiplied by x. So I'm going to multiply this by x to show me what I do up here. I'm going to multiply it by x. Hopefully you see what I'm doing. And so that gives me b times x, which is bx, whatever. Okay? Now let's look at this one. To get from x to x, oh, um, parentheses, x plus y, what happened? Well, I already have my x, but now I need to multiply that by x plus y. I multiply that by x plus y and got that. So that's what I'm going to do to the top, x plus y. That gives me a over x plus y. Okay, so now I take my first number, or <laughs> letters, <laughs> combination A, X plus Y, and then you're going to say plus, just like I would go 3 plus 2 equals 5, I'm going to say 3, or A, um, X plus Y, plus BX, okay, 3 plus 2 equals 5, this plus this, that is our answer, equals that, over, and then we use the same common denominator, x over, or x um, times x plus y. 
final answer. And that's exactly how you leave it. Okay? Just so you know. All right? Now, if you were to take this, um, you could actually um, then multiply and do all kind of different things. There's several different forms to put it in, or you could put it in. But we're just going to leave it just like that, okay? In that form, um, just to make it as easy as possible. Like you could expand AX plus AY plus BX like that. Then you could go X squared plus X to the XY. Um, but we're just going to leave it like that. So that's the answer, okay? Let's do a few more just to make sure you're getting this, okay? And we're going to leave our standard up there just to continue to remind us what we're doing each time, okay? So if this helps for you to put it on your paper like this, um, go on and do that. That way you'll know what to do every time that you're working it. Okay, so here's the next problem. 4x plus a over a plus b plus c over x. Okay, and this time I'm going to write it up and down like I did last time. 4x plus a over a plus b and then we're going to add that C over X. Again, we would try to figure out 2 times 3, which would give us 6 as the answer. And we're just going to go A plus B times X, which would give us our common denominator. So I'm going to make it X, A plus B. You could have said A plus B times X, however you want to do it. X, A plus B. That's our common denominator. That's 2 times 3, 6. That's this times this, this times this, which equals 6, per se. Okay, now we have to figure out where do we get from here to here. So I already have my x, so now I have to go times a plus b to get that answer, right? So I have to do the same thing up here, a plus b. So I'm going to write out the answer, c times a plus b. Then we're going to go a plus b. How did I get this? I times it by x, so I'm going to times this one by x. I'm going to put it in parentheses so it doesn't get confusing. And so then you write it out, x times 4x plus a. Okay? You could have switched it around, but I'm trying to make it as easy as possible. All right? You see that? All right. So now let's write out the whole final answer. We've got um, x, 4x plus a, plus c, a plus b, all over our common denominator, x, a, plus, b. See that? Now, if you wanted to go on and take this and multiply it and make that 4x squared, you could. You can make that 4x squared, and then that x times this a would be x, a, or a, x, and that would kind of solve that if you wanted to. And then you could make this c, a, plus, times that one, c, b, so you can answer it in several, several different forms, okay? See how that would be CA plus CB, okay? And then um, you could even do XA plus XB. So there are several different forms you can put it in, but it all gives you the same answer, okay? All right. Hopefully you're understanding it. Um, let's do another one. Now, I do have something else to teach you in just a second, so um, just uh, hold on for just a second. This one's going to give us three, so you might want to really pay attention. And I'm going to go in and write it vertically. A plus B over X plus C over M plus just a D. Now, I'm going to want to make that D over 1, just because this is a fraction, this one's a fraction, this one's a fraction. Okay, so to make this all a common denominator, 2 times 3 gave us 6. X times M times 1 would give us just 1XM or just XM. Okay, that's our common denominator. Now let's go. How did I get from 1 to get XM? I had to multiply it by XM. So I have to do the same thing, times XM. So that gives us DXM, DXM. Okay, or you can even just go D times it by XM, but either way, you're going to get that. So D times XM is that. All right. Make sure I'm still doing all this correct. Okay, and then um, M, what did I, I got my M, so I just times it by X to get the XM. 
So I'm just going to time this one by the x to get cx. Then x here, how did I get xm? Well, I times it by m. x times m is xm. So I'm going to times this by m. See what, see what I'm doing? Okay? And so m times this a plus b. It's best to put this um, um, added part in fr um, parentheses because the m applies to this a and this b, this a plus b. So I went on and put it in parentheses. Okay, now I'm going to write my answer, m a plus b plus cx plus dxm, and then all over xm is my common uh, denominator, xm, or an x, however you can say it. Okay, final answer would be this, and again, you could extend this if you wanted to. All right? Um, let's do one more just to make sure, and then we're going to do something um, totally different. Um, so here we go. A over, now all these are written horizontally, and I'm going to want to write them down like this. A plus, or A over B plus C, minus X, and I'm going to make that X over 1, plus D plus M over K. Again, how would I get 2 times 3 would give me 6, so this times this times this would give me my common denominator. So 1 times K times that, so it's 1K, or just K, times B plus C. K, B plus C. Be like me writing 6, 6, and another one up there. So B plus C. Now, I have to go, how did I get from here to here? I times it by B plus C. So I'm going to time this one by B plus C. So I've got this D plus M plus this B plus C. See that? Or I'm sorry, times. Because that it times that. Sorry about that. Okay, and then I've got 1 times this. And so I have to multiply all of it, K, B plus C. To get KB plus C, so let's do that times KB plus C, which gives me X KB plus C. Whew, this kind of gets confusing in your head if you look at it a whole lot. So how did I get from B plus C to KB plus C? I times it by K, so that's what I'm going to do at the top, times it by K. So AK is the answer up there. So now you write down this minus this plus this all over our denominator. So, AK minus XKB plus C plus D plus M times B plus C all over KB plus C in parentheses. Woo! Okay, and that's exactly what the book says the answer is, okay? So that's what you leave. All right, now, we're moving on to something overall average, okay? So, let's do some overall average, all right? Here's what it says. The average of the first six numbers is eight, okay? So, that tells me that we had six numbers, um, and eight was the average. So, that tells me that six times eight is 48. That told me that the sum had to be 48, Okay, so if I had 48 and then I divided it by 6, I would get 8 as my average. Okay, so what that's saying is, if the average of the first six numbers is 8, okay, you need to know that that meant that the sum is 48. So whenever you're working with, you might want to write this down, whenever you're working with overall average, and they just kind of give you like, um, the first six numbers, the average was eight, and things like that, you have to know the sum. Overall average, you have to know the sum. Okay, and the sum is the answer in the middle, okay? Because if the average is eight, then that tells me eight, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six. So there were six numbers, and I got average of eight on each time, then that gave me 8 times 6, 48 as my answer. 
So in order for me to get an 8 as an average, I had to have 48 as a sum when I divided it by 6 because there were six numbers. Hopefully you're, that's making sense. Okay, so, so 48 is all I need to know so far. Then it says this. The average of the first six numbers is 8. The average of the next four numbers is 10. Okay, so that tells me if I had an average of four numbers, okay, what's the, what's the sum going to be? 40. Because if I have four numbers and I get 10 as my average, then it had to be 40 as my sum. Okay, so I have 48 as my sum on the first six numbers, and I had 40 as my sum of the second four numbers. So how many um, grades did I have or numbers did I have? I had 10, okay? And what was my total averages? Or, I'm sorry, sums. 48 plus 40. So that gives me a total of 48 plus 40 gives me 88. So that tells me my total sum is 88. My total amount of numbers that is saying that we have the first six numbers and the next four numbers makes a total of 10 numbers, okay? So I've got 88 as my sum, 10 numbers, and so what's the final answer gonna be? It's gonna end up being 8.8 .8 once you do the math, okay? So the final average is 8.8 .8 on that one, okay? If you had a little bit of a hard time on that one, stay with me, and so let's do a few more. But remember, when you're working with overall average, you have to know the sum. So listen to this one. The average of the first four, I'm sorry, the average of the first 90 numbers was four. So literally, there were 90 numbers, four, 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 90 times. So that's 90 times four. That's 360, okay? So 90 numbers with an average of four would be 360 because... If 360 is my sum, sum, and I have 90 numbers, 90 times 4, that's my average. Okay, you're used to finding average as the quotient. Okay, so my sum is 360, which is the most important thing you need to know. All right, and then it says the, net, the average of the next 10 numbers is 6. So that's like writing 6 10 times. If you wrote 6 10 times, that would give you a total sum of 60, okay? Which, if you had, if you were working with um, the next 10 numbers, 10 numbers into 60 would give you 6, which is right. That's kind of what they're saying, okay? So, my sum is 60 for the next 10 numbers. My sum for the first 90 was 360. So, let's go on and add those two together. 420. So, 420 is my total sum. All right, what's, how many numbers am I div dividing by with my total sum? I have 90 numbers here, and I have 10 numbers here, which makes 100 numbers. Okay? So then I take my 420, my total sum, dividing it by 100, and I would end up getting uh, 4.2 as my answer. Okay? That would be the overall average. Alright? And that is lesson 52.